Hello, welcome to yet another video of Cornerstones of Math and welcome to yet another locus problem. If you haven't seen my previous locus videos, please check the links in the description. Today we will be solving the following problem. Consider two circles x plus 2 squared plus y squared equals r1 squared and x minus 2 squared plus y squared equals r2 squared. First, when r1 equals 1 and r2 equals 2, find the locus of point P that is equidistant to two circles. What is the shape of the locus? Also, indicate the domain of the locus. And for the second problem, it says r1 equals 2 and r2 equals 1. And we have to do the same thing. We have to find the locus of point P that is equidistant to two circles. And also, we have to indicate the domain of the locus. Right, so the problem is pretty straightforward. For the first case, two circles are given like this, and point P is equidistant to two circles. So we let P as capital letter X and capital letter Y. Finding the locus of P means finding the relation between X and Y. In order to find that relation, we must utilize this equidistant condition. But how can we calculate the distance between a point and a circle? Generally, the distance between point P and curve C is the distance between point P to point K, where this point K is a point on the curve such that the tangent to the curve at point K becomes perpendicular to line PK. You'll need calculus to prove that, and someone actually made a really good video on that matter. In the case of circle, however, the situation becomes much simpler. The distance between point P and a circle is simply the distance between point P and the center of the circle C minus the radius R. So let's apply this property to our main problem. The distance between point P and the circle on the left is distance between P and the center minus 2, 0, so square root of x plus 2 squared plus y squared minus the radius 1. This must be equal to the distance between point P and the circle on the right, which is distance between P and the center 2, 0, so square root of x minus 2 squared plus y squared minus the radius 2. And hey, we found a locus! This is not entirely a joke, because the locus is the relation between x and y, and we have just obtained the relation between x and y. But obviously, the intention of the problem is to obtain a simplified form, so let us further simplify this relation. Moving minus 2 to the left-hand side, we have square root of x plus 2 squared plus y squared plus 1 equals square root of x minus 2 squared plus y squared. Now it's time to remove the radicals by squaring both sides. Then we have x plus 2 squared plus y squared plus 2 square root of x plus 2 squared plus y squared plus 1 equals x minus 2 squared plus y squared. So notice that y squared terms cancel out. And if we expand these squares, we have x squared plus 4x plus 4 plus 2 times square root this plus 1 equals x squared minus 4x plus 4. So now x squared cancel out, and 4 cancel out, and we have 2 times square root of x plus 2 squared plus y squared equals minus 8x minus 1. And if we square both sides again, we can finally remove all radicals from the equation. So we have 4 x plus 2 squared plus y squared equals 64x squared plus 16x plus 1. So by expanding, we have 4x squared plus 16x plus 16 plus 4y squared equals the right-hand side. In cancelling 16x, we have 60x squared minus 4y squared equals 15. So we have the simplified expression for the locus. This is actually the equation of the hyperbola, another famous conic sections other than the parabola and the ellipse. 
to find out how the hyperbola looks like, we need to rearrange this equation further into the form of x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared equals 1. This is the hyperbola centered at the origin, having a comma 0 and minus a comma 0 as vertices, and y equals b over ax and y equals minus b over ax as asymptotes. So from here, let us divide both sides by 15, then we obtain 4x squared minus 4 over 15y squared equals 1. We can write this as x squared over 1 over 4 minus y squared over 15 over 4 equals 1. Here, 1 over 4 is 1 half squared, and 15 over 4 is square root of 15 over 2 squared. So we have this expression, which is perfectly in this form. Now, what would be the domain of this locus? Well, in the solution presented so far, every step must make sense. And let's take a look at this expression right here. The left hand side is 2 times square root of something, so it is non-negative. This means that the right hand side also must be non-negative. So we have minus 8x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0, which gives x is less than or equal to minus 1 over 8. If we take a look at the equation of the hyperbola, you will notice that this hyperbola is defined on x greater than or equal to 1 half or x less than or equal to minus 1 half. You know, as indicated by this equation and this figure. Therefore, this condition means that the locus must be the left branch of the hyperbola, which is defined on x less than or equal to minus 1 half. Therefore, we can write the domain as x less than or equal to minus 1 half. In conclusion, in terms of small x and small y, the equation of the locus of p is this, and the domain is x is less than or equal to minus 1 half, the left branch of the hyperbola. And if we draw the locus, it looks like this. So the locus is this curve on the left, and you can easily check that the asymptotes are y equals square root of 15x and y equals minus square root of 15x. For the second case, we basically do the same process. We let p as capital letter x and y and use the equidistant condition. So the distance from point p to the first circle is square root of x plus 2 squared plus y squared minus 2 because now the left circle has radius 2, and the distance from point p to the second circle is square root of x minus 2 squared plus y squared minus 1, and they are equal. So moving this minus 1, we have square root of x plus 2 squared plus y squared minus 1 equals square root of x minus 2 squared plus y squared. And by squaring both sides, we have x plus 2 squared plus y squared minus 2 square root of x plus 2 squared plus y squared plus 1 equals x minus 2 squared plus y squared. So we can cancel out y squared, and we can expand these square terms. So we have x squared plus 4x plus 4 minus 2 square root term plus 1 equals x squared minus 4x plus 4. So we can cancel out x squared, and we can cancel out 4. So now we have 2 times square root of x plus 2 squared plus y squared equals 8x plus 1. Here, let us compare this with the equation we obtained at the same point of the solution in problem A, which was this. The only thing that's different is that the right hand side now have the opposite sign. But if we square both sides to remove the remaining radical, then the two equations become the same. This means that the process becomes exactly the same as in the previous problem after we square both sides. Therefore, the equation of the locus is the same as in problem A, which is the hyperbola, 
x squared over 1 half squared minus y squared over square root of 15 over 2 squared equals 1. The only difference from the previous problem is that the sign of the right hand side here has now changed compared with the previous one. Therefore, from the condition that this right hand side must be non-negative, we have 8x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 0, so we have x is greater than or equal to minus 1 over 8. Therefore, this time the locus only consists of the right branch of the hyperbola, hence we can write the domain as x greater than or equal to 1 half. So now the locus looks like this. Same hyperbola as before, but now the right part. And that was all for today's video. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and also subscribe to my channel for more interesting math videos. And as always, I will see you in another video.